Hey there, welcome back to Flat Tire Farm. Today we're making the best zucchini relish I've ever had. Now making zucchini relish is a really great way to use up these giant zucchinis. I don't know if it's a problem for everybody, but it's always a problem for us that when it gets to be August, it's the rainy season, and they get, these guys just go out of control and we can't keep up with them. Um, so it's not going to matter if they're big and a little bit mushy because they're just going to get turned into relish anyways. So first thing is first. Let's get all these cut up and get the innards out of them. I'm gonna cheat a little bit today and use the um, the Ninja, which is not something I generally do, um, but this is a lot of chopping and I want the relish to have really fine pieces. All of my butt ends are gonna go in the pig bucket for the pigos for later. Slice it down the center and clean out the seeds. When they get this big, the seeds have been established um, and so you kinda wanna scoop out that innard part. And if you wanted to, you could save the seeds or put them in the pig bucket. Now we happen to have a lifetime supply of zucchini seeds, so in the pig bucket it goes. We are looking for eight cups of chopped up zucchini. So let me get these cleaned up and then I'll get right back to you. Okay, we got all these cleaned out. You, we're just gonna chop them up into nice sized pieces for the Ninja. You don't have to use a Ninja, you can use a food processor if you want. I used to have a really nice food processor, but I tried to grate soap with it, um, hard soap. And that, after a while, killed it, and so that's fine. <laughs> it's dead now, and so now I just use the Ninja, and that's okay. So, I'll do this real quick, and I'll show you. I mean, you probably know how to chop something up and put it in a food processor, but... Chuck it in there, yada yada. Get it chopped up, maybe. Huzzah. Nope. Okay, now huzzah. Okay, you don't want it to turn to liquid. So, sometimes the Ninja, which is not the most efficient for this, leaves the big chunks in there. So I just pull the big chunks out. But you just kind of want it shredded size, I'll show ya. Okay, and we will just keep chopping and chopping until we get eight cups worth. And so I'll see you back in a bit. Okay, we got our eight cups of zucchini finally chopped. We still have a bunch left. We're gonna use a little bit more for this recipe later on. Um, and then I'll probably make another batch off camera later today. But let's scoot this junk out of our way for now. And we need four cups of chopped onion in this batch. So same thing. Ooh, I put my pig bucket somewhere. Oh, it's down there. Okay, good. Usually one normal size white or yellow onion makes about um, two cups of chopped, finely chopped onions. You could use red onion in this recipe if you wanted to. It doesn't make a difference. Um, some people like to shred all of the zucchini. Remember, we chopped it. I don't like it all shredded because it just is stringy and weird to me. Um, and so I chop some and a secret you'll find out in a little bit is that I shred some later to add in. Um, let me get my pig bucket on the table because I just don't function without it. Okay, now we're in business. All right, same thing. We're going to chop these up, kind of cube them up just so that they fit fine in the Ninja. Onions usually don't bother me that much. They're happening to bother me right now, but lots of people have lots of ways how they uh, stop their eyes from tearing up when they're chopping onions. My mom kind of grew up with a family that grew up in the depression in uh, Cape Cod. And so I don't know if this is a Cape Cod thing or, you know, East thing or everybody thing, but she used to put a book of matches in her mouth and that would help, um, not tear up for onions. If you've got other ideas about what you can do to help not tear up with onions, I'd be happy to hear them in the comments below. Um, and maybe some of you, your mother's told you to put matches in your mouth too. You know, it's, I think, hard to even find those books of matches anymore. All right, and then we're going to ninja this up. Sorry, my eyes are watering. <laughs> we're going to ninja this up about the same size um, of that zucchini, and then I'll meet you right back. Okay, we got our onions all done. Now we better throw these in the pot because we're running out of room. Eh, 
I think we can brave it. We don't need to, we don't need to shift yet. Who needs a bigger bowl? Not me. All right. Now we need two medium sized red peppers. We're just going to throw it all in there. And again, we're going to chop it up about that same fine chopped size. Okay, and then ninja it goes. Okay, we got both of our red peppers finely chopped and in our giant measuring cup. We'll scoot that out of the way for right now. Um, I'm going to mix most of the rest of everything um, in the Ninja just because it's easy for demonstration purposes. Put all the seasonings in and stuff than standing at the stove and doing it. But there is one more thing we have to chop up. Um, this recipe calls for three cups of vinegar. So we're just going to use some junky old white vinegar. Nothing special. If we could find where the cups are, that would be so awesome. Well, maybe. Aha! Seek and you shall find. Okay, we're in business. <laughs> I was almost there. I got to get credit for that. Okay, let's get this out of the way. So this is optional. Um, this is celery tops from our garden because this is, well, all that we got out of the celery was just the tops. And you know what? I grew that and I am not wasting it. So I'm chopping it up a little bit, throw it in there. And then also I have um, some whole turmeric that I processed and chopped the little roots down and it lives in my freezer. Um, and so I'm going to do that much. Okay, so maybe maybe two tablespoons of whole um, turmeric. And I will give you a number in the recipe below for the conversion of what it is for powdered turmeric because I don't expect everybody to have that on hand. I just happen to get my hands on some, so that's what I'm using. Now to find my lid. Hmm. Aye, aye, aye. Okay, I'll be back. <laughs> lid, where are you? All right, you sassy thing, you got to stay over here. Okay, we found our lid. Now we're just going to chop all this up until that, pretty much till that turmeric liquefies. Um, and it doesn't matter how small the celery gets chopped. So we're doing it together. Okay, you can see we got that all mixed up and that the vinegar completely changed color because of the turmeric. Smells a little bit like curry in here. <laughs> okay, we need one teaspoon of pepper in there. Ooh, that's a little much. We better put some back. Half a teaspoon of ground nutmeg. If you have the kind that's already pre-ground, you can use it. Um, but I like to use these little whole nutmeg nuts, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> a nut of meg? I don't know. Anyways, half a teaspoon of that. And I got it from a lovely viewer, Miss Sandy. She sent me a new one of these... Um, Micro planers that doesn't eat my fingers like my zester. Look, see, no problems. All my skin's still there. <laughs> so, let me get that nutmeg in there. All right, we need a tablespoon of salt. I use Redmond's Livestock Salt that I grind down in my coffee grinder and I add lemon zest too because that's just what I like. You could use any old kind of salt you want. Actually, I lied. You can only use pickling salt or non-iodized salt. Um, but as long as it's non-iodized, you can use it, okay? We need four teaspoons of celery seed. So that would be a tablespoon plus another teaspoon because science lesson of the day. Three teaspoons makes one tablespoon. Four tablespoons of mustard seed. I use um, yellow mustard seed. Um, I don't know why, I just do. And I have brown mustard seed also, but I think you could use either one. So that would be a tablespoon and one teaspoon. The rest will have to just go back in there for the day. Then we just need two teaspoons of celery salt. I buy it in bulk because it's way less expensive for me. I'll leave the link below for this giant one. Okay, that's good. And I think I'll give it one grind just to get all of the seasoning off of the, the little blades there. Okay, we're 
going to get our liquid in a giant pot with all of our solids. Ugh. There we go. And three and a half cups of white sugar. Sorry, friends. Okay, now we're just going to mix this up and I'm going to set it on the stove for just a moment. I'm not going to turn the stove on. I'm just going to get it out of my way because we have one more thing to add um, and it takes just a moment. So I'll meet you back in a second. Okay, we got all the stuff sitting on the stove in the pot. The stove's not on yet, um, but there's one more thing that I want to add here. And the problem that most people have, I think, with zucchini relish, relish is that it gets kind of soggy, um, which is accurate. And so some people will put a bunch of salt in with their chopped zucchini first and then kind of let the moisture wick out and let it drain. But I just, number one, don't want to add that much salt. And number two, don't want to waste that much salt because normally you drain it all out and pat it dry. And I, I love you, but I don't have the patience for that. So this is how I solve that problem. And I like the texture a little better when I do it this way. So remember some of that zucchini that we saved out. We did eight cups chopped, and now I'm going to do four cups grated. So I'm just going to grate it in like the normal, I don't know, cheese size grater until I think I have about four cups. Okay, this is not four cups, but let's just pretend it is. Okay, Ooh, we got some extra bonus, huh? In the sink. All right, I made that, that shot, by the way. <laughs> okay, so... We're going to set this in this little mesh strainer, this stainless steel strainer over this bowl, and it will naturally wick out its own moisture over time, and we'll be able to get rid of some of that moisture without the added salt and or wasted salt. So I'm going to finish getting this grated, and then I will let this sit, I don't know, long enough for me to kind of clean up and maybe rinse some dishes out. So maybe five minutes or less, and then I'll meet you back and show you what I do next. Okay, zucchini tornado is a little bit cleaned up now. I don't know, maybe it's been five or six minutes. You can see there's already some liquid in the bottom of this from this draining, um, but I'm not gonna wait for it, I'm gonna help it out. So with this little stainless strainer, can handle a lot, and so I can really push on this and get the juice out of there so that it doesn't end up in my relish. And then we'll dump it in the pot with everything else. I'll meet you back when I get most of the moisture out of this. It only takes like a minute or two. Okay, we got all of our stuff in the pot. We got our zucchini kind of wrung out to dry a little bit. We're just gonna dump that in there now. Give it a quick stir, and we're gonna put this on high until it boils. While it's doing that, we better get the water bath kenner filled. Okay, fall is here, so we have a fire in the wood stove most of the time now, and now we have hot water again. <laughs> Hallelujah for that, right? So this is our hot water stock pot. It holds 10 gallons of water. It has a little temperature gauge and a spigot at the bottom. Um, I love it, I'm happy. In a small way, it's going to be winter soon. It means I have on-demand hot water that I didn't have to pay for the fuel for. <laughs> so right now, this is about 110 degrees. I'm going to fill enough water so that when I put the jars in, the water will be an inch or two above um, the top of the jar. And the reason why I'm using this water is because I'm still going to put it on the stove to heat it up, but now I don't have to pay for as much propane because this water's already hot. And the firewood was free. It came from our property off of dead standing wood. Okay, back to the stove we go. Now, if you're new to our channel, all of that about having on-demand hot water on the wood stove, and why do I have a big pot on there, and why do I even have a wood stove, and what am I talking about heating with propane, probably doesn't make a lot of sense to you. We live in Alaska, and we live in a small off-grid homestead that we're building on 40 acres, and we heat. This is a regular stove that we've converted to heat with propane, um, and so when I turn the stove on, beep, beep, boop, I'm paying for propane, every bit of it. Um, and we don't have running water, nor do we have, you know, a way to heat water that's not on this stove or on the wood stove. So if I get a preference, it's always on the wood stove for free, pretty please. So hope that all makes more sense for you now. We're going to get this water bath canner heated. We want it to come to boiling and hopefully it'll be boiling about the time this is boiling and they'll be ready at the same time. So I'll meet you back when stuff gets bubbly around here. Okay, we're starting to simmer so we're almost there. 
wanted to show you my new jar funnels I got. I used to have two jar funnels. Um, one is that um, gray plastic one maybe you see me use if you watch our videos. I don't know where it is. I'm not going to show you. Um, but it happens to be the only one I have because the other one I melted like severely with hot oil. I don't know why I thought hot oil could go through a rubber jar funnel, but apparently I, you can't. Don't do that. So I bought these silicone ones. Um, I did buy a stainless steel one for when I um, rendered down fat. But that aside, six bucks. So six bucks I paid for these three collapsible silicone jar funnels. I don't know what I'll ever use this teeny tiny one for. Maybe fill in hot sauce bottles, but mm -hmm. anyways, I've been pretty happy with them. So thought I'd share it. I'll leave a link in the description below. Six bucks. Like you couldn't buy this at the thrift store for $2. So mm -hmm. anyways, <laughs> we'll use it in just a second. All right, we're close enough to boiling to make me happy. So we're gonna stick our jar funnel in our jar. I'm just gonna use half pint jars today. I'm not gonna put all the liquid in there. That's the biggest problem with zucchini relish is there ends up being a lot of liquid because that zucchini really releases a lot of liquid. Um, and you could add clear gel or a thickener if you want, but I don't really want to do that. I just want to get all the stuff I want in the jar and not clear gel because clear gel, number one, is expensive. And two, I can live without it. We're going to leave us half an inch of head space. Okay. Now, I'm not making these completely dry. They need to have liquid in them. Um, up to the top, I'll show you. So, there's our half inch of head space, halfway between the rim and this glass ring that goes all the way around because that's a whole inch right there. So if I do it right there, which is half, you can see it. That's half inch of head space, okay? And you can see that the liquid is all through there, which is perfect. So, now I'll show you how to put a lid on. We're gonna put the lids on finger tight. Just, oop, I lied, hold please. Let me show you the right way, not the cheaty way. Okay, so now that we have our stuff in our jar, we have a half inch of head space, we're gonna wipe the rim with a, a wet paper towel to get all the goop off of there. If this had meat in it or fat, I would use um, vinegar, but just water is fine for this because this is a pickling brine. All right, so we're going to take our lid with our rubber ring around it. We're going to set that right on the rim of our jar. And we're going to put the ring on finger tight, okay? Finger tight means that we put it on there and spin it just till it first catches. And then we're going to tighten it an eighth of a turn of the jar or an eighth of a circumference of the jar. And that's finger tight, okay? Let me get all the rest of these jars uh, filled with the lids and the rings on them. And I'll meet you back in a minute. Okay, so far we have 13 half pints. Um, of relish in our canner. Look at that. Ooh la la, right? Okay, there's still a little bit left. And what you could do to avoid having to do two batches like I will, but remember, I'm going to do that other batch in a little bit anyways, um, is that you could use 12 ounce jars for this. Um, and it would take up the same amount of space, but you just have to add a little bit more water and then you wouldn't have to do two batches. But I do want to show you what I do with the leftover brine. Um, with a batch size like this, I end up with about three cups of leftover brine, which normally I hate leftover brine, but this makes the best coleslaw dressing you have ever had if you mix it with mayonnaise, you know, and cabbage and all that. Um, maybe I'll do a video on how to make coleslaw. I don't know. <laughs> Anyways, let me show you um, how I get the brine in the jar without dropping my stuff. Okay, now that I have my jar funnel rinsed off, I'm put the jar funnel in the jar. And then I just have this little strainer that fits right in there. See? Baba! I think, I don't know, I think these are like three bucks or something for a pack of them. Um, they're stainless steel. They're actually sink strainers, but I use them for cooking all the time. Um, I'll leave a link below for that, and let me get the ladle. Man, I'm just not together right now, am I? Okay, I think I got all my junk together now. So, I'm just going to strain it in here. Because I want just the brine for this. Okay, now we have just brine. We can use it for whatever we want, and we're going to throw it in this water bath canner with all um, of these jars. It's gonna cook for the same amount of time, which is 15 minutes. So we're going to get the water boiling again. It was already hot, so I turned it off. I didn't wanna waste the propane. Oh, you can hear it, it's ready to boil again. 
I'll get the lid on this, get the ring on it, stick it in there. When this comes to a rolling boil, we're gonna, roiling boil, a rolling boil, we will uh, drop all this down in there and set the timer for 15 minutes and I'll meet you back when the timer beeps. Okay, our relish water bath can for 15 minutes now. And actually, I let it cool for a while because I want to show you something. Look, nice and thick. No clear gel. No thickener. Look at that. <laughs> it's delicious. Stay tuned for the bloopers, guys. Okay, it looks pretty mixed up. You can see the vinegar completely changed water. Be er, hmm, Let's try that again. So we need half a teaspoon of ground pepper. I lied, what do we need? Okay, we need one teaspoon of pepper. Meet you back when I'm done massaging my zucchini. 